All right, so today I want to talk about the World Championship time trial, which obviously occurred yesterday. Filippo Ganna won, surprise, surprise, not too much. Um, maybe it was after his Europeans, which wasn't great, but again, not too surprising. The rest of the podium, Walt and Remco, again, not, not too crazy surprising, um, but obviously Remco sort of is, if you didn't know who he was, because he's so small and has a pan-flat time trial, but, you know, it's Remco. So I think what I want to do, first of all, is just talk about Remco's power data, because he's the only one who's actually decent, who's uploaded his power data, and then, you know, we'll go into some positions and then also some tech. Because, to be honest, the tech this year wasn't great. Last year, a lot of people did rogue stuff that we hadn't seen before um, in terms of, like, non-sponsorship stuff. This year, I kept my eyes peeled. I couldn't really see anything non-sponsorship that, that was that chaotic. But anyway, we're going to look at Remco's ride. 48 minutes at 390 normalized. Now, just before we get into it, people keep saying that his power day overreads. And, like, it might do... But the thing is, he still goes really quickly. So you're either saying his CDA is really low, lower than you th this, which is still, I think, quite low to do 54K an hour and 390 watts. That's like pretty low CDA. Or you just, I guess if you think it's right, then his CDA isn't as low as people think. I think roughly, I actually think it probably is right because he just is really good at riding a bicycle. And, you know, 6.2 for 48 minutes is obviously obscene, but Remco is obscene, so... I think, you know, he does run those dodgy Shimano right-hand side power meters, so they're always questionable. But I think for the purpose of this video, we're gonna say it's more or less right. I mean, it could be five or 10 watts, it could be 10 watts too high, but even so, it's still stupid power. And I think it goes to show that realistically, being super idle, as Campanites would say, is the most important thing because I reckon Campanites is probably doing similar numbers to this um, and is really error and will go fast. And we can also look at Dan Biggin, which is obviously very exciting. Well, not exciting, but interesting just to see the power difference between them. But if we look at Remco's power day, so 390 watts gives him about 6.2 watts per kilo, uh, which is obviously crazily good considering his position. Now, I think 6.2 watts per kilo on obviously on a road bike is like for World Tour guys, is not crazy impressive. Um, but it's the fact that when we go to his position, obviously this is Ganner and this is some other Randys, um, but if we actually look at people who are decent at riding a bike, um, we're gonna go to Remco in a minute, and I believe here he is. Now this position is very good in terms of aerodynamics, but normally you'd say, okay, they can't put as much, as much power out, but he seems to be able to do it, and his hip angle is really acute, and I think this is the thing that's ridiculous, is that like, it's not like he's, got a you know upright position he's got a super a, like aero position but he can obviously do stupid watts and to be honest like if we just look at this section here 54 kilometers an hour at 390 watts like that is pretty good aero and you know you might say okay his power meter is over reading but it's like so you think he's doing like 300, 370 at 55k an hour like that would be outrageous it's even more um the other thing that's interesting is his cadence is incredibly high this is also like wow van art and potentially again this is due to do like his crazy position is that obviously if you have a higher cadence then you need less force per stroke so maybe that's easier on your glutes and your hamstrings um as well as your like hip mobility maybe it's easier if you have a high cadence i'm not 100 percent sure but he does have a really high cadence it could also be that when he was racing juniors obviously they only have like a 52 14 i think it is so you know if he's doing 400 watts or whatever for a short tt he just needs to spin that gear as quick as possible so that could also be why he has such a high cadence um but yeah really incredible numbers from remco probably what you'd expect but i think it's just the whole time is just crazy to think that he does it in this position um we'll, we'll flick through a couple other people i think it's interesting to look at for instance um tony martin did a really good tt considering his position isn't great compared to other people um afini uh Pagacha is a good position but i think he's not really targeting this and also maybe the other argument is the fact that he's not as good at fresh tts compared to tired tts which i think is probably a valid argument um and then we got kung as well what happened to him you know one europeans and then suddenly five people beat him or well, four people beat him all not on npcc teams which is what all the rumors on twitter are about but anyway i'm not going to get into that we all know what what the deal is but it's interesting the fact that he does have um you know the tri spoke no one else really has it the roval wheel on the back he's gone one by that's good to see um like to see that he has taken um some sort of non-sponsorship uh, steps to go faster i'm not sure about the wheels uh, the tires sorry they look like they could still be co um conti's but you know conti apparently the tt tire isn't too slow this is a classic wout van art um you know 100 mil on the front that seems to be quick 
Not sure what these are. They could be Hoob like or Vortec overshoes potentially bottle in there as well. Still running two by. I think you know if he takes if he goes one by he might beat Ganna. It was that close to be honest. Um, that would be my recommendation to him is go one by. And you might think why are you telling him this? But it's like every amateur in the UK knows that one by is quicker. Like if I was him, I'd just be like you know what I don't care if I like people are gonna give me a bit of abuse for like you know the team for going one by. It's quicker. You just gotta do it. The chain, I assume, is waxed as well. Obviously, it doesn't have a massive PTFE coating, so it's hard to tell, but you'd expect that if he's not running a wax chain, he's a bit of an idiot. Um, the rest of the bike, I mean, the, obviously, the position is all dialed and all the rest of it. 100 mil front wheel seems to be the thing this, uh, that gets you quick, and then, obviously, there's Ganna, who's just very, very, very good at riding a, a time trial bike. Um, I can't remember what Ganna's wheels were, actually. We'll have a quick look at that because I believe they may not have been what I thought they were. Oh, yeah, he's on Veloflex tires on, like, um, I believe that is the Princeton Carbon Works front and rear disc. Again, he's on two by, he's experimenting with one by. I don't know why they don't go one by on a course like this. Like, it genuinely, it boggles my mind that you would on purpose lose watts. And it's not like Shimano sponsor, like, Shimano sponsors the team, but then it's like, oh, you don't have to use our wheels and all the rest of it. It's like, if I was Ganna, I'd tell the mechanic, oi, whack a 62 tooth on and let's go, because that's important. But anyway, we're going to go on to this because um, Wout Van Aert obviously didn't upload his power data. Same with Askreen, all these boys. But I think it's interesting just to see what Max Walsh did. 450 watts. I'd expect that's probably what Wout Van Aert did, but he's a bit more aero because he's just smaller. And same with Ganna. Jan Tratney did 400. And then you look at Dan Bigham did 380, but got basically the same time. And that just shows you how important aero is. I mean, like, that's ridiculous. You think 70 watt difference. He goes to same speed. Battered Bjerg as well. 50 watts more, battered uh, Craddock as well, 20 watts more, battered McNulty, like, do you see what I mean? The aeroness is very important, like, Bonner's Paik, 360 watts, Dan Bigham, you know, that he's pretty aero as well, Ryan Mullen, 400 watts, finished way down, so, again, this bloke as well, we can see his position, this is Christopher Urado L, um, and if you look at his position here, like, he did good watts, 400 watts, but, like, come on, you're not gonna do anything if you have a, a position like that. That's something you'd see like the mammals post, post on time trial positions. I don't wanna be rude because it's like, you know, he's at the world championships. I, I can't abuse him too much, but like, come on. There's just small things that like annoy you. Like he's running two by, again, his position's not very good. Like, not, it, like I know UCI limits are a bit hard, but come on, like no one, if you look at the fastest guys, no one has that position. So why would you do it yourself? I don't really get it. The helmet, okay, maybe like it could be quick, but you know, he's clearly a strong boy, like, you know, with a couple adaptions, he could have gone significantly quicker, um, and then this guy as well, from Lithuania, I mean, the position's all right, it's not great, like, okay, yeah, he's got a deep front wheel, but again, two by and all the rest of it, and it's like, you know, I get when it's a sponsor that more, but when it's literally probably your own bike, like, why would you not go one by, um, again, this rider here from Pakistan, like, you know, it's a decent frame, you know, he's got a deepish wheel, but the position and the one by, like, I just don't really get it, to be honest. Um, to be fair, Marcus Christie had a pretty good ride. Tri spoke Wiggins' old bike. Um, again, running two by. Position's better, but still not great. This guy here from Azerbaijan, I'm pretty sure. Oh, Uzbekistan, sorry. Again, position's just like, mate, you suck in the 90s. Like, come on. Um, he's got five spoke on the front, two by. But anyway, that's enough anyway, ranting from me. If we look at the, the fast guys like Walshai, he's pretty sure he's on one sure by. On one by. Okay, he's got his disc brake bike on now, uh, which is rogue, but he's worked on his time trial position, and now he's really good. He was never known as a time trialist. He was known as a sprinter. But he realized, I have some watts. If I can get error, I can do what well. And he has shown that. And I think, you know, if, if you're really into, t like, if you've got a big engine, getting into time trialing is more just like the, the mindset of uh, every marginal gain. And I think, if you're willing to like really focus on it, you can do super well, even though you might not be necessarily the strongest person, um, if you can just get really arrow. Obviously, it depends on the team. If your team don't care about time trialing, it's gonna be tough, but yeah. Um, if you look at, like, Tade Pagacha runs one by, and it's like, he doesn't need that. He's strong enough, but if you're not running one by, you're just losing watts, and it's just how it is. Like, I just don't get it um, at all, a lot of these people. Um, and then like custom extensions, I think a lot of people have. I don't know how fast they are. Some people say they are a lot quicker. Some people say they're not. Um, but again, you can see the quick step boys are always pretty good at time trialing. Stefan Kung, one by again. He's, he's thinking about these things. But anyway, that's enough rambling from me today. I uh, hope you did enjoy. Got a lot of videos coming out to do with my bike. Got some na naughty tubs on the way. Well, not on the way, they actually arrived. One kilo for the pair. 
um, and also going to talk about my bike um, which is going to be super light and also wax chains which I'm now selling link will be in below but um, we'll do a proper video on that soon but anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy and we'll see you in the next one